Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. This is a message on its own. We can dwell for weeks here just trying to unravel this mystery. This is Jesus praying. But that thou shouldest keep us them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through the truth. 20. Now listen. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Say, Jesus prayed for me. Or say, Jesus prayed for me. When he was praying this prayer, he added you to the list. He said, I'm not just praying for these immediate disciples, but there are many who will receive and believe and come into the truth as a result of their word. 21 is my verse of emphasis. He says that they may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they may also be one in us. Why? To the end that the world may believe that thou sent me. Everybody say that they may be one. I'm really speaking passionately to the body of Christ tonight and this concerns every one of us because we're a part of it. I want to challenge one of the things the bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address when you read ephesians the fourth chapter beginning from verse 10 the bible says when he led captivity captive he went down to hell and the bible records that he gave gifts to men are we together now he said he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that and then he says he gave this fivefold for certain things for the equipping perfecting maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry what's the work of the ministry kingdom advancement right then he says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so it is God's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of Christ called the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. The unity of the faith. A level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice. That when we speak, creation, human beings, government, systems, will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one are we together now one of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church 
that makes the pursuit of God look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person. As though God is not interested in the corporate growth of the body. Are we together now? So we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of God. That's how it comes. It comes through a person but it is for a people. Are we together now? And this, this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of Christ because we have not been able to attain onto that point of unity, maturity, and perfection. It's been a mighty tool that Satan has used. And so, in the next two or three weeks, we are going to be examining the concept of, of uh, this statement that they may be one. The concept of the unity of the faith. But to start off tonight, I want to um, take on, you would call it a subtopic. I call it three great errors. Three great errors. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Yes, we will forever sing your praise. Give us revelation tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 25. Let's start off from there. Three great errors that I believe has caused havoc in the body of Christ, has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers, many ministries, many well-meaning people who love the Lord and desire the pursuit of godliness. Exodus 25 and verse 40. This was the construction of the tabernacle media. You need to help us very, very fast um, today. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read together. One, to read. And look that thou make them after what? Their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. If you can have amplified, that would be great. Hallelujah. It says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done at according to pattern listen when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding god are we together that degree of autonomy is not given to the believer there is a pattern there is a pathway there is a system with which god desires to be known and you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of God. Several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways to accessing God. But there is a system. It's consistent with the character of God. That every time God gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself, he shows you how you will walk into it. In this instance, he revealed to Moses, I want to build a tabernacle, but there are specifics. It was on account of that that the hand of the Lord came upon Bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship. And here God is giving a warning again. He's saying, make sure under no circumstance should you become emotional about this building of the temple. Do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say, no, no, no. Instead of using gold, gold is not available. It will take us a long time to go and, uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that. Let's just manage this. God is saying, when it comes to this, you keep emotions and sentiments. There is a prescribed pathway. Are we together? It's amazing how many people attempt to cultivate formulas and methods 
and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to Christ. That's why Jesus ended that confusion once and for all. He said, I am the way. I lead you to the truth and I give you life. Hallelujah. The concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with God. Ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of God. Families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of God. Listen, everybody say spiritual patterns. Say it, spiritual patterns. There is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom. Hallelujah. There is a spiritual formula for being a father. The only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula. When you guess your own method, it has severe side effects. There is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom. You guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around, there will be a side effect. Let me tell you something. You see the failure of governments across territories from Nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth. When God designed man, he gave a pattern. Are we together now? Our refusal to pay attention to the patterns of God is what is responsible for many tragic events in families. When you see a family, for instance, where it is the mother who is fending for the children and the father is there crossing his leg doing nothing for instance that is a violation of the patterns of god and the bible says whosoever breaks the hedge please pay attention the serpent is authorized to strike so your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription, your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter. Hallelujah. Now, we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth. Everyone with his own um self-exaltation we pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments we pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things and these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be god outside of the christ you see let me tell you something when the new testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in christ any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority, the supervision and the jurisdiction of the Christ is error, is disalignment and is apostasy, a deviation from God's patterns. Are we together now? There is a pattern for everything in life. When God anoints you and calls you into ministry, there is a pattern. When God anoints you and calls you into leadership, there is a pattern. Now the trouble there is, we receive the call and choose our pattern. Are we together now? Think how many times the people in the Bible refused to move until God told them how to do it. Moses is standing before the Red Sea and he knows the Red Sea can part. He knows there is a provision in the might of God to deal with that situation. Now Moses as a person did not know how it will happen. But one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom there is a provision for dealing with that predicament. Are we together now? And so Moses had to pay attention to stay with God and God spoke to him in Exodus 14. Tell the people to move forward. Stretch your rod. Part that sea with it. When they got to Jordan, you would think it was the same instruction given to Moses. 
But Joshua had to wait to receive another pattern on how to part the same sea. You went for a meeting and the Lord told you, let everybody lift his hands. Then you go for another one and assume if God said everybody lift his hands, that's what he's saying now. And you say, everybody lift your hands. And nothing happens. And you say, Lord, what is this? And he says, I'm a God of patterns. Is God speaking to us? There were times when the nation of Israel were told to stand still. Don't do anything. God will fight for you. Hold your peace. There were times he said, prepare for war. You are going to fight. Patterns. Our inability to understand. Listen, please. I pray that God will open your eyes. This is not even where I'm going to. When the Bible says all things are possible. Let me explain to you what that means. In God's multifaceted wisdom. There is a solution for everything. Only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition. Are we together now? The Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns. How God approaches things in life. His methodology, his approach to the issues of life. God's pattern is that listen if you do not have love for instance even your faith works by love that's god's pattern god's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the world has their pattern cheat loot kill hoard resources Are we together now? The world prides itself in achievement. In the kingdom, it is God that gives men the power to get well. There are patterns. Our cultures have their patterns. For instance, they tell you when you get married, beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you. Then start treating her well. Are we together now? So that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity, the memory of what had happened will put her into order. That's a world's pattern. But God says, uh-uh, wives submit. Husbands, love your wives. And he didn't leave you to love the way you like. He said, as Christ, love the church. Are we together now? Let me tell you something. Dear, our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns consistently in God's kingdom if you want to be great you must be humble in the world system you try to like a political party you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you but here's how we, are, we rise in the kingdom if I be lifted up not if you I will draw all men are we together now? Divine patterns. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll begin to talk about the errors. Ezekiel 43. When I found this, this was, this was powerful. I mean, it blessed me. Ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. Ezekiel 43. Is God blessing us already? There are divine patterns. Ezekiel 43, 7 to 12. It says, And he the Lord said unto me, Son of man, listen. He said, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. He said, and my holy name, the house of Israel, shall be no more profane. Neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry, nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings. Verse 8. Nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth. Let's go to 9. Listen, he said, now let them put away their idolatrous halotry and the dead bodies and monument of their kings far from me and I will dwell in their midst forever. Ten. Son of man, listen. He said, show the temple by your description of it to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity, that they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns. He says, and let them measure accurately its appearance and 
plan. Next verse. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it. This was a prophetic language. He's speaking prophecy here. It exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them. He said, look, 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 look. These guys are guessing around. They are guessing. The reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like, like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression. When, when Balaam was called by Balak to go and curse the nation of Israel, when he got to the mountain, the Bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation. Are we together now? The nation of Israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. That was a pattern that was given. And he looked and he said, ah, these people are blessed. I cannot curse them. He tried to curse them, but the dexterity of the pattern refused the curse from coming out. Are we together now? He that breaks the hedge, he that violates the patterns, the serpent, not may strike. The serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment, waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations. He said, tell them, I want you to give them the dimensions. Because you see, a man, when you read the New Testament, the Bible tells us that we are, we are temples. Temples. And so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet Ezekiel, he's saying there are dimensions, there are patterns. Listen. This spiritual alignment works like magic. Look at me. Please look at me. I want to talk to you honestly. Brothers and sisters, you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life. Elijah the prophet understood divine patterns. When it was time to call the presence of God, he didn't roam around guessing his options. He said, bring me 12 stones because he was operating with the God of the covenant. Bring me 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He put a sacrifice upon it. He said, bring me water. And there was blood upon it and he called down the God of heaven and God came instantly. Are we together now? The patterns of God. There has been largely a deviation from God's pattern. You see, when you look at a life that after prayer, after fasting, you lay hands on the person, four gallons of oil, and the person does not change, and there is no breakthrough. Let me tell you, among other reasons, that person is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom. Let me tell you something. Please come. You see, Ba, if this guy has a spirit manipulating him, whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom, no matter what kind of deliverance I do, the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery with him. Are we together now? Because the devil knows that the edge is broken. He can find expression. We see this in the book of Job. Satan came to Job and found out that the hedge was closed. And he went back to God and said, allow me. Allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression. So I can pray for this guy and lay hands on him. Are we together now? But he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of God. The pattern of God. You see, someone sent me a text. Thank you. Someone sent me a text today and said, um, 
He said, I'm tired of my life. I don't even know what is happening in our family. Man of God, I believe one word from you will change our financial situation. And I said, it's not true. No. I wish, listen, I, I can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough. But that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket. There is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family. Are we together? One. They are not honoring the Lord with their tithe. No, 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 no. Let's even leave honoring the Lord with their tithe. Number one, their hearts like the Macedonians are not even with God. It says they draw nigh to me with their mouths, their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Are we together now? Tithing is zero. Even when it is zero, even when it is there, it's a bribe. They walk up to God with anger and resentment, spend everything and calculate what they spent later on. And now say, I spent... 10,000. Okay, God, how much do I even have? 2,000. Okay, take 1,000. This is your tithe. That kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty. And then, to talk of other principles, you do nothing, you get nothing. Are we together? That idea of something for nothing is an illusion. It's nonsense. So that man is violating this pattern. And when he comes for miracle service, in his mind, he's thinking, Oh God, let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say, Your level is changing. And all through the preaching time, he's impatient. He's just waiting for where we say, Rise up on your feet. Because to him, he believes every other thing I'm saying is nonsense. This man, you are happy. There's water in front of your table. That's why you don't know what is wrong with me. Listen, it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word and understand the principles of the spirit and one of the errors that is even coming to the body of christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me i have something for you tonight. are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because i am praying look i know so many ignorant prayer warriors who whose lives is not producing any result their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another are we together now we just finished seven days prayer and fasting but there are there are patterns there are principles that you must learn listen please pay attention to what i'm saying if you are still guessing your life you are going to be in trouble please come here jimmy let me use two people benga come uh, who promise come let me just use these three people come sir now watch this these are great men of God. These are three great mighty people. Listen. If I give all of them a mic and I say in five minutes. I, I'm not going to do that. Just an example. I say, Ejimi, what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom? Maybe that's the question he has to ask you. Can you stand up and articulate the same way I look at you? And I say, how do you make jollof rice? I have uh, get a pen and paper. Get one cup of water. Go and buy this and that. Add onion. Don't put it too early. Do this and that. All of those rules. Are we together now? I come to Benga and I say, how? Is, it, is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health? Oh yes, the Bible says it by his stripes we are healed. Are you living in it? No. That means something is wrong. And the problem is never from God. Can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula? Are we together now? Number three, I meet promise and I say promise. Can favor work in my life every day and every time? Is there such a reality in a man's work with God? That based on an understanding and a, an anointing that comes upon your life, you can walk in favor. I can call one more person and say, can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit? 
can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years i'm still moving forward regardless of what happens everyone say patterns please look at me brothers and sisters your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand it's about understanding the construction you have to know how the kingdom is built the systems of god's kingdom to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory otherwise no matter what else you do it's only a matter of time you'll be frustrated i guarantee you you can jump around and act like you are moving forward 10 years down the line because this is why you find out that so many people this guy starts well after three or five children he's angry he cannot remember the message he preached 10 years ago because he only prepared it for preaching he preached it powerfully but that truth has not been seated in him what do you know which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation if somebody looks at you now and say mama i'm going to a herbalist tonight and i assure you you see this fowl that i'm holding in my hand is for you we are going to kill you this night i want to ask you a question koinonia what will you do i know what many of you will do you will call me or you will call benga or any of the leaders <laughs> apostle somebody is, is daring i'm a member of koinonia that's why you will stay first you see let me tell you look up look up listen if this is how it continues becoming i'm not helping you i'm only it's like a musician coming for a show that's what is happening the goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying my this guy is an anointed man of god no there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you are we together like a button at a point you should be able to hold it that which we have seen that which we have heard now you handle it and you can go places with it i know it i know how this thing works somebody looks at you and say you are a failure continue praying in tongues and you laugh and say no i'm not just a tongue talker i know the patterns of god i understand it listen i don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth if you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom the days that will come will frustrate your christian experience look at what is happening for instance in the economy now 1200 naira or there about one gallon of oil now the reality is that that's that's very painful but have you got the light that shines in the night in the midst of this cry some people have never had it this good what is responsible for it are we together there seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold even preachers I, sometimes i really find it funny a man of god comes on stage and says look uh we are going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded he has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit and so he has exhausted every message four months into the year he's tired and then he comes and says well um why are you put looking at me like that it's not like i didn't prepare i've been busy you think ministries and then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out he does not know that there is a formula in the spirit that can keep men on fire 24 hours believe me when i say this that when people are drowning spiritually right a man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago five years later is, is barely trying to pray for headache something happened his inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up are we together now please look at me what you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point that's how to grow 
you don't just open your devotional and say today let me read second kings i've not read kings in a long time you are not growing you are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the bible then when you finish you just walk around pray for two hours in tongues just stroll around and ba -ba 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 -ba, one hour ba -ba -ba, two, two hours and you just say oh that's enough i'm growing you are not growing believe me you are not growing it's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show that there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is is access to mysteries access to patterns he understands the art of war he knows what to do he knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy spiritual growth is not haphazard you can lay hold on eternal life you can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom if that is not happening no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach there are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth to grow spiritually is not to get to the point where you can now start writing books look even an unbeliever is smart enough you can go online what does it take intellectually speaking to prepare a nice sermon if i tell you to preach on faith are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages on faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say okay we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message and at the end somebody is saying this is amazing i've never had this i thought the greek word was pistis now you are bringing another word wow and then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of christ or writing songs no it's not a sign that you're spiritual your degree of alignment to patterns look at me brothers and sisters it is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say my god bless you and that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved Everybody say, I want results in my life. Please say it, I want results in my life. This is why, regardless of how spiritual we think we are, the people in our environment, subconsciously, they are not impressed and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver. If your life is producing results, I assure you, your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody. Nobody who says, yeah, stop shouting, Jare, it's too much. No, they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window. Eight o'clock you are at it. Is it wrong? No. But that you are believing that just that in itself, on its own, please believe me. You see, Ba, I may not I may not 
claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of God and the operation of the kingdom I know what I'm saying there is a way a man walks with God that God will make your life a wonder there is a way a man thinks he is walking with God and at the end it looks like God is a wicked God I counsel people all the time after years of spiritual activities, they return back with frustration. And they say, Apostle, I can't understand. I'm the prayer leader in my group. I love God. Every time we organize crusades, maybe in a, a place, our village at the end of the year, I can't understand. Why is God this unfair to me? Is this, is this how my life will be? I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me and believe me when I tell you God is a good God something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of god and you see that's why many pastors have to be careful a whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor especially here in the north because we are very religious people we are sincere people who are religious so a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years, he's teaching people something that is an error. With such authority and audacity, they give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say, this is the way. And when the child is saying, Daddy, I think he's, they say, I, will, I will slap you. It's been this way. Have you gotten results through it? Don't question God. It's only God that knows what he's doing. Let's just keep on. No, no, no. Everybody shout, no way. There is a way. Growing up, I saw many things. Well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about God. This is how we mock ourselves. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everybody clap for Jesus. They clap, say, no, 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 this is not for my Jesus. And God is saying, do you really know me? All these things you are doing. Look how many frustrated people in the body of Christ. Look how many people are sick in the body of Christ. As if divine healing is a lie. That's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in God to bring you healing, they are just watching you. It's when they hear somebody just shout, ah, 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 under the anointing, everybody say, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself. I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true, but we must admit it. Our inability to understand his patterns. God is a loving God, but he's not an emotional God. If he were an emotional God, the cry of many people would bring them out of hell. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Yes, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I have watched the lives of people, even in Koinonia here, I've watched the lives of people when they came for Koinonia with their beliefs with their understandings about god and they chose to receive the word of god foolishly childlikely and watch what has happened in their lives hallelujah patterns let's go to three great errors i don't want to just dwell here but i mean I can stay here all night and challenge you. I took a study towards the end of last year 
on God's generals afresh. I've studied them so many times. So many times. But I took, I took another study recently. And it was as though I had never studied them. I remember crying almost for two, three hours in the night and say, Lord, what nonsense is this? How come we lost touch with spiritual reality? No symbol to charge the atmosphere for them. No worship song as we know, dancing around. But these people came with sincerity. And they activated possibilities in the lives of people. Those guys had results. Hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed. Verified, not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're healed. Very sure that they are healed. And the Lord reiterated it to me again. Son, I will not bend to your pattern. It was when the prodigal son got up and said, I will arise. The father wanted him, but the father would not just get up and roam around. The son said, ah, ah. He thought to himself, I have disaligned out of pattern. When I was under the authority there, I lacked nothing. I wanted self-sufficiency. It drove me out into lack. Now I'm eating with pigs. Question, did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father? Did any demon advise him? No. He said, I will arise. Let me tell you, some things are not demonic. It is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today. I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the Bible says, afar of while he was yet coming, the father saw him and ran to him. And ran to him. I am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of God. Our generation is not in ignorance. Technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities. I watch believers now and I'm telling you with all sincerity, the way many people are seeking God is not how I sought God. I sought God seriously. You don't even see anybody say, okay, let me get a concordance. They don't need it. I remember times when we'll sit down, we'll be asking questions. Ah, Jesus went to hell and preached a message. First Peter said so, and we're very fine. Right now, believers don't say, they sit down, gist and talk nonsense. Then when it's time for prayer, everybody say, let's pray. Begin to pray, everybody begin to move around. And we move around as if we're making a fool out of ourselves. Listen, let me talk to you. I have a responsibility to teach you truth. If I did not have the results in my life, you will say I'm deceiving you. Are we together now? Many people call upon God and it looks like he cannot answer. And then we keep creating theologies to explain this. Brothers and sisters, he can be hard. There is a disalignment. We need to return. So pastor said, God is not a God of crowd. He's a God of what then? God so loved the world. Not God so loved Israel. God is not a God of crowd. I desire that no man perish. Prosperity is not the most important thing. All that is needed in your life, you don't need any anointing. Don't no nothing. No, the, the most important thing. If you have Jesus, you have everything. It looks like a very nice message. Believe it and see what it will do to you. It will destroy your life. That's what has happened. Let me tell you. Do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty? And so it is out of guilt you will believe it. People just say, I hope you know there's nothing in this life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you just feel guilty and say, ah, that book of financial intelligence I bought. Let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking. Three errors. Let me talk about it. Error number one that has ravaged the body of Christ is the error of apostasy. Please write it down. Apostasy. Open up your spirit now. The Lord will bless you. Apostasy. What is apostasy? A departure from the known patterns of God. A departure, a derailing 
from the principles of God. The name is apostasy. Two scriptures very quickly. First Timothy, please, chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Apostasy. The first error in the body of Christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with God's pattern. It says, but the Holy Spirit, listen, distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times, some will turn away, not backslide, turn away completely from the faith. It says, giving attention to what? Deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Who teaches it? Demons. There are doctrines in the body of Christ that are doctrines of demons. And when I say doctrines of demons, don't just think the modern church. Ancient and modern, all. There are doctrines of demons that are older than us. They subtly came. They look spiritual. Satan always uses it is written. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth. Listen, please look up. The first operation of demons in the life of a man is deception. To cause a man to err. To manipulate truth. See, deception does not have to be a lie. A manipulated truth is also deception. I can take truth out of its context. And preach. You see, I've shared with us again and again that this Bible is a prophetic book. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything you want to hear. There are native doctors that when you enter their shrine, you see Bible. Does that mean they are of God? You know it's a native doctor. But you enter, you can see all other religious books. And then he adds the Bible. He can even say, Let's, before I even pray, before we cut this chicken, turn to Psalm, Psalm 5. Now you are reading, listen, you are reading the Bible. I say, ah, Psalm 5, this guy, this guy is making sense. Ah, I'm, I did, say, ah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but my own is different. apostasy a deviation from truth there are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from god they had something but it was not the spirit of god and they misled people every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of god is witchcraft whether the operator of it is aware or not the operator may be innocent but it does not justify the operation are we together now? How many marriages have broken in the church because somebody got up and said, Ah, um, I don't know what is I'm seeing. Martha, leave your husband because as I'm looking at you now, I'm seeing that um, there is a spirit. And they can't even tell you the name of the spirit. The name of the spirit is A and B and C. Pastors have left wives People have beaten people. Parents have disowned children. They have called innocent people mommy water. If somebody who is in his right senses was born, he has birth certificate from the hospital. You now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things. Now listen, I'm not laughing. I'm serious because I'm going to balance it. There are many people who have carried the illusion right now. They walk around saying I'm a witch. He said, who told you? He said, a hey, man of God. That's why I came for miracle service. They said, I am a witch. The man of God has never paid attention to find out what the Bible calls a witch. What is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard? Are we together now? And this has misled people. How about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy his name is Benga. He likes keeping Malu. He will sit down by your left. If you don't marry this guy, your life is finished. And for 10 years, that lady is roaming around Nigeria looking for Benga. Moving all around. We've discussed this under challenging discussions. 
on late marriage. There is a balance to it because there are times that it is true. See, when truth, notice, when truth is manipulated, it becomes witchcraft. Apostasy. So many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings. Let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe I'm challenging people that rubbish demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell please look up came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important the most important thing is that jesus is lord of your life and you are heaven bound that's a doctrine of demons it's popular it's taught by conservatives but it's still demonic money is the root of all evil doctrines of demons it came from the pit of hell by sincere people well-meaning don't confuse. I'm not saying those who brought it are demonic. It is devilish and it is terrible. Because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives. Other doctrines. Prayer is not important. You hear people say that kind of thing. Prayer is not important. They even laugh and mock and everything. And you see some people pray. Bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing. And demons are saying we like, we like this congregation. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Another doctrine of demon. Once demons, once you are praying and you don't have any business with the word, just pray. It's still the same thing. Are we together now? There are all kinds of episodes of lies sugarcoated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of Christ apostasy a deviation from the truth men of God have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects some of these ways of raising money I, I say you know that I love the body of Christ but I must say it we think it's nice we think it's marketable but some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga it was under strong transcendental meditations they received some of this formula and then we watch their videos on youtube and say wow so this is how you raise money in the church and then you now come and we apply all kinds of things now the man may be genuinely anointed but there is a mix an aberration it's called apostasy a deviation from the truth some of us right now you have believed something that is not of God. And that's what has authorized Satan. Regardless of your prayer, he still finds expression in your life. There are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is marry one. They even tell themselves. It looks nice. And they say, man of God, I have like 10 guys. The last guy just came two weeks ago. Just can you help me? Which one do you think will be a nice guy? because a doctrine was marketed to you are we together another the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing is making men in the body of christ demigods are we together now usurping authority not just spiritual guidance but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people the disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things there is a place for that but i've always found that such imbalances that have destroyed the body of christ so we have offshoots of these kinds of things people who kneel down and hands up in church churches where they flog people oh you are not aware of it it has happened to some of you that's why you are quiet you are just looking because it has happened Listen, I don't say this in a cynical way. I came with my heart to pour it out. This apostasy. Jesus prayed a prayer. He said that they may be one. They will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength. Doctrines of devils. Right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations. Are we together now? If you want to rise... You have to come into it's almost like a cabal like a cult you never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things 
and at extreme levels at least it's not strange in the body of christ we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies how many men of god have been caught with drugs at airports customs grounded them right do you think the man of god started selling drugs like that he started innocently the first day he went on tv he paid almost one million he said ah there must be another way of raising money and somebody say continue going we, we are telling you this thing we know how it works and say together with your preaching you buy the shoe that has uh whatever you put cocaine if you ship that one successfully they transfer the money to your account who will know after all it's just your spirit that is say your, your 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 body your spirit is going to heaven your body will be transformed all kinds of theology apostasy it may not concern you now but if you don't pay attention to it you'll be very surprised a man of god once said and i've shared it here how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons and after he finished the ministration he he saw the crowd within a year there were well over four thousand people and he looked at him he said ah, in this place four thousand he laughed and said daddy you think your oil what what you are releasing upon us and he said no he told him he said go out he sat down with his wife he said my daughter talked to me and she said i will tell you the truth sir he said they went to somebody true story a herbalist who gave them a mic you know most men of god we have our mics they gave him a mic but that mic they slaughtered a baby like these are little ones they slaughtered a baby with the physical blood they did some enchantments and gave the mic if you are passing that vicinity and your spirit is not at a particular frequency if you hear that sound you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly are altar calls being done in that church you won't believe it <laughs> are miracles happening in that church you won't believe it you don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here Do you know what people do for this anointing? Do you know what people do for power? Do you know what people do for jeep? Apostasy. And people compare themselves with themselves. I shared with you a story years ago about a man of God who had a particular oil that was given to him. You rub it when you enter the meeting, the dramatic manifestations of the spirit. And one day, you know they were doing an early morning service true story and he's like assistant like this um he didn't bath you know because he had to wake up in the morning run to church so maybe you just wash his face and he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room and when he went he saw the oil you know anointing oil just like, I, I thank god let me just rub this thing fast so that at least i can look nice i can bath after the service and the guy rubbed the oil when that guy stepped into the church I mean, there were all kinds of somersaults, and the Jew looked at him and called him. He said, What did you use? He said, I, I, I saw oil around your this thing and I rubbed it. He said, You rubbed that oil. May the Lord punish me as I stand before you and I'm lying or just giving you a story. Apostasy. Those who have completely deviated, they are not of God. Or those who are of God but their doctrines are not of God. A man can be of God but his doctrine is of another spirit. Are we together now? It's still apostasy. So there are those who as people are not, are not um, of God. There are not many of these kinds. Let's be honest. In Nigeria, popular to the stories, people say everybody, they are fake men of God everywhere. It's, it's not true. There are very few people, very few, and they are not even popular who are fake. But a man can be of God, but his doctrine. There was a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of Balaam. Question, was Balaam a false prophet? So what, why, why was his doctrine? 
being used to admonish the church there was a doctrine called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which I hate now the Bible tells us about the doctrines of demons praise the Lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of Christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and it, ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of Christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of God. Error number two in the body of Christ that will stop the body of Christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy. We have a group of people, a group of individuals and a group of men of God who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body. For as long as their individual ministry is doing well, let the body of Christ go places. Look up please. These are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial. These are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things. Please look up. They are the kind of people who can see somebody like Sam being corrupted in his worship ministry and he's going down and they say, well, this is not my music director, so I don't care. They have the fear. They hate being controversial. They are the kind of men of God who always want a good name. They are the kinds of individuals. They, they don't want to be associated with any stain. No, 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 no. Let it not be. Those kinds of people, because of that fear, of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual have refused the power of God from finding expression. They are the type who don't want anybody to fall down in the church. No, no, no. We don't, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet, lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, you say, what's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shebiu, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen, let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Mm. Titus chapter 1, verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1, verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many... Of the people the believers and ministers in this group fear because of their they are so conscious of their ego their ministry and their reputation there are so many men of god in nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of christ die than they stand strong to say no 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 but this requires adjustment They can gossip about it in the secret. They can gather people together and castigate men in the secret. They can say all kinds of things in the secret, but none of them have the courage. They are the type that will see a sister and say, do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship? And you are wondering, you are her pastor. What is wrong with calling her and say, sister, I love you. They would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy. They are the type that they say, ah, oh, promise is in, in the police station. They say, please, we have many members. This is just one of them. Let the police handle their work there. Because he said, um, if his pastor comes, he can talk to him. He said, please, I'm not a pastor of criminals. You see that? Overly conscious of their reputation. Let me tell you something. And I stand before the Lord of heaven to tell you this. If you have scars... I will get on my knees and I will clean that scars with you. Never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation. I don't have one. I've been controversial from day one. There are husbands who will not identify with their wives. Two years, she's not giving birth. And somebody looks at her and starts singing a song. 
Why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife? And the man starts distancing himself. The fear. Listen, if you want the body of Christ to become one, you must drop aside your ministry, your ego. Are we together now? Because you love the body. That's what Jesus did. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took on my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are from my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my hands to you in adoration. Listen, by the grace of God, there is nobody close to me who I will see derailing and I will be ashamed to hold his hands. We have stood by people in this place with all kinds of situations. I'm not, my idea of being a man of God is not gathering. That's why men of God do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind, lame. Those ones are not sons. The one who is a CEO. The lady who is drop dead beautiful, my daughter. The one who is, is, is God, God is helping them, all kinds of things. She's sick, they don't have money, it's depending on you. That one is a nuisance. The fear of being controversial. The fear of confronting apostasy. They sit down in a place, they are the people who can be outside. And somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of God because of a misconception. And they have the opportunity to say, ah, my brother, whatever it is that happens, you don't address this. They keep quiet. And the person who is talking is saying, I, I think you are aware. You know that a Jimmy is not serious with God. The guy will be nodding. But he's supposed to be a Jimmy's member. But he's nodding because of the fear of identifying. We have people in the body of Christ like that. Are we together now? They are ashamed of identifying with Christ. They are the type who will never put a gospel ring to. They are the type who can never wear a shirt. Jesus saves. Ah, they are falling their hands. They are the types who can never say bless. They will say bless you when they come for koinonia. But they can do every other thing. Fear. Fear of my ego. Fear of my ego. Fear of my reputation. When they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, that was what they thought he had. The fear. They thought he loved his ministry so much that Jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute. And they dropped her before him and said, you claim to be holy. This lady, she's been caught in adultery. What do you recommend? And Jesus looked. And he says, you see all of you, whoever does not have sin among you, cast the first stone. And she was shocked. When he went to the Samaritan woman, there was a time Jesus sat with prostitutes. He was not preaching. They were eating. And people said, this guy is a liar. When Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on Jesus' feet, people said, that's it. We've had enough of this. This guy is, is no, you are not straight. No way. You know Mary Magdalene somewhere. This is not the first time this is happening. And watch this. Jesus never had any pressure to defend himself. I know what many of us would do. You go and say, look, I want you to know that I just looked at her and it's not like that. I know she's somebody's wife now. What is the whole thing? Can't... Fear. Fear of evangelism. A guy loves you, but he's not sure you are a Christian. And God says, preach to him. And you say, ah! After this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fall my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. 
Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no, no problem. Just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, won't you take two? And then you just take one cup two and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus. John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen. How many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day and carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say, God, whatever it is, let, just let, let me. There are many people I know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent, but they have come to me in secret say man of God pray for us sorry you know that it's just because of our environment the courage to be controversial those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival how many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around the courage to be controversial Titus 1 for there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty, and misleading talkers. Listen. And self-deceivers and deceivers of others. Listen. He said this is true. Especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that. Verse 11. Listen. He said their mouths must not be stopped. For they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach. For the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them isaiah 5 verse 20 let's hurry up isaiah 5 verse 20 fear of confronting apostasy they will not speak so you don't know where they are standing because if they speak it may cost them money it may cost them support there are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths members will leave and they will rather leave the members and teach error it's a dangerous thing brothers and sisters Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know those who do that? They are the ones who come and say, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You preach, I mean, it was powerful. Hey, Jimmy, I can't, I can't believe what you did. And they go back and say, what that guy is teaching? Say a lie. They do not have the courage. Are we together now? Because of money, because of fame. There are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations because they were given conditions not to preach certain things, not to say certain things. And they said, that's all right. That's all right. And it's growing. Right now, the media is trying to strangle God out. You are not allowed to say God again. Now there are technologies that mute those parts. You watch it in films. People are saying, my God and my, and you don't hear anything. They've removed it away. But they can't allow any other curse word to be free 
because their subliminal message is programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God. How many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say, look, we are business people, but this is my pastor. I am a Christian. I love the Lord. Ah, I say, you don't do that. If you do that, that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy. And so they don't mind behaving that they are not of Christ. They don't care. You are in a board meeting and people are saying, this is what we are supposed to give the workers, but we are going to chop this one. Just don't mind them, all these poor people. And you are there, you just laugh. When it backfires, you say, I didn't say anything. But you watched it, you would have enjoyed it if it came. The Bible says, they are the ones who call who evil. Is there any problem? No, 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 no not at all. It's all right. The fear that's what happens in Nigeria that's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we are having because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined there's a man of God I love so much many of you know him Pastor Tony Bakari I love him very well because not necessarily because I believe in all of his ideologies I love him because he's a man who stands I love people who you can define what they represent let me tell you never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody is a dangerous person they cannot define their stand you don't know what camp they are in today it looks like they are here tomorrow it looks like they are here they can become anything as occasion serves them they are dangerous people very dangerous people are we together now there are so many people like that there are people who come to church they are nice in church but you can if you organize one party they won't come in the in the evening when the light has gone down they'll just roll and say i just came around before you do it they start nodding to the music last scripture ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 and 19 the second category of people who are causing error in the body of christ those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of god because of what it will cost them ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19 listen if you say to the wicked if i say to the wicked you shall surely die and you do not give him warning are you hearing now or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way to save his life he said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require from your hand next verse yet if you warn the wicked man and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered yourself there are many men of god who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire and i assure you they will answer god the rich man is unfaithful to his wife you know it the rich man is into drugs you know it he carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church and because you need the money you cannot sit down to say sir please hold your money i'm more interested in your soul out of that one million you have already calculated two jeeps 10 10 million that's 20 tight 10 million instruments speakers i'll buy another rav4 for my wife you have calculated it god is watching the fear of being controversial you can stand with one billion naira i will tell you the truth and tell you this is it this is not it number three is god speaking to us ready for number three the third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error hmm. pay attention to what i'm about to teach exaggerated confrontation of error This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. 
The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I will dwell and then we will pray. The third category of people, those who are cynical, wicked by default, who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people in a bid to prove that they are correcting, they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of Christ. They are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from God. Listen. There are many men of God today who preach against receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask them why. They will say, I went for a meeting and I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying, three hours eight hours and they are not praying they are the ones who are intimidated the day somebody from the prayer group falls sick they are the ones to let you know those prayer people somebody has fallen sick it's not all about prayer and they say i've been telling you so they they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark i watched a video this afternoon that touched me it was a um many of you know a TEDx and all of that so I was watching I saw the name it says the power of shame and I said wow this is interesting let me and then I clicked on it to listen to it and it was Monica Lewinsky remember uh, some of you were hallelujah 1998 the saga between her and Bill Clinton right had a scandal and you won't believe it Jimmy when I heard Molly Kalewinski talk for about 30 minutes I'm not an emotional person honestly especially when I'm under the anointing but I found myself fighting tears because popular to the stories they gave us popular to the way they lambasted that lady a 22 year old lady at that point you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and nobody heard her opinion they tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying i said this reminds me of our world i can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something what i wanted to say did not leave to you the way it came those who sit in koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error say they understand what i would have said but somebody who has been looking for an occasion will say come and listen to this he will cut he will even thank god for i mean he will cut i said just listen to this line he said apostle joshua selman said the primary assignment of the holy spirit is to kill you now he didn't understand what i was saying he said can you see that and you are going to that kind of church <laughs> They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, Kai, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They say, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time they, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or correcting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. 
Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy. From the standpoint of envy. Bitter jealousy. The standpoint of envy. They use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table. You know, there are churches that sell communion table, wristband, water, etc., etc. Now, there is an exaggeration to those things. But you do not throw the baby and the bad water. Thank God I'm not selling anything to you. But I've seen a lot of ministers, even communion, they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood. They are selling this. Ah, forget this. They are fathers of faith. What sort of nonsense is that? The people do not understand the mysteries. I've seen people insult God's servant, Bishop Oye, David Oyedeko, because of feet washing. You may not practice it. You may have reservations about that. But learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations. And even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose, it must come from a heart of love. Not from a heart of bitter jealousy. There is a way I can talk about a man of God. You will know I have a personal vendetta. This is not about addressing an issue. This is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression. Hear me. If you belong to that group, it must change tonight. Are we together? A lady who is feeling bad about herself has a very bad self-image and may not work on it. And all of a sudden, she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say, "Look at, look at what this. Look at all your Christian girls." The way she's is true that that lady is nude, but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude. She is angry at the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough. So she's using hammer to kill a fly. She keeps talking about it. I said, something pained me today. What is it? See the way this Christian girl's dress. The, what they are trying to address is imbalance. Here men of God talk about miracles. They say, do you know that people stage manage miracles? There are people who do this. Yes. We know that there are people who do this, but are there people who teach the truth? Are there people who teach the truth? Every young man that is prosperous, oh, they are drug barons, they are this, this, they are 419, they are whatever. Don't mind them. How can a young man be so rich? Don't worry. I mean, life has time. Your limitation, what you believe, you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody. Listen to me. Some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of Christ. I told you here, you never hear me open, open my mouth and talk about a man of God to condemn him. If I mention the name of a man of God, it's to honor him for something. I challenge wrong doctrines. I would challenge things that I feel need to be corrected. Are we together? But I will never tear down another man's ministry because I'm trying to show you hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom it will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact thank god for the wonderful things he's doing through us but i am aware you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of god who love god with all their heart some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a Catholic church because of your cynicism. Oh, Holy Mary, they do this and that and that and that. And God brings somebody to your life who can bless you. But that stigma, because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalance, you have closed your heart. Somebody from another denomination cooks food for you. You say, God forbid me, I can't eat this. What has that got to do with the food? There are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages. Once it is not your member with your church having your wristband or having the pastors or all kinds of things.
you fight everybody let me tell you it is a lie from the pit of hell don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit is in itself is an error jesus said i pray that they may be one that's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say oh the god of koinonia i don't have a problem with it honestly but i personally for organizational purposes no we give the glory to god and it stops there are we together three great errors the error of apostasy the error of indifference is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand they don't know whether you speak in tongues or not they are not sure they don't know whether you believe in miracles or not please look at me the second category they are the type who can go to a harbor list and still come to a man of god they don't care are we together now yeah they are the types who who will run and take drugs in the secret swallow panadol swallow fancida and come up and say look in the last 10 years god is my witness even uh, even i don't even know how panadol what was even the name as if they have forgotten panadol how old are you you see the second category the day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious they travel and don't come to church the lord asked me to preach this because it's very important it's a message to us and it's a message to the body of christ listen galatians chapter 6 verse 1 two scriptures and then i tie it up and we'll pray galatians 6 verse 1 brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort listen he's teaching you how to confront error there is a way to confront error there is a way to confront sin there is a way to confront mistakes are we together there is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing and addition and multiplication to the body he says brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort he said you who are spiritual who are responsive listen to and controlled by the spirit should set him right and restore and reinstate him listen without what any sense of superiority and with all gentleness then he puts a disclaimer keeping an attentive eye on yourself see that less you should be tempted to okay the guy came to you and said honestly i love god but last week i found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm and say ah go and tell apostle <laughs> it's not even me that will say this thing but you see that and before you know it everybody in zaria knows that promise went to collect a charm you destroy his life you destroy his ministry and you say i've always known it's not today there was a day the holy spirit was revealing to me holy spirit i'm sorry for refusing to hear you we we pride ourselves listen how many wounded soldiers i'm rounding up in the body of christ do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church I'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense. Let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens. Am I, am I endorsing it? No. Let a lady get pregnant. It's a believer who will come to you and say, have you heard? Say, you mean you are here? Hey, you have eyes you can't see. Are we together now? A brother goes to ask a sister and she says, no, no, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm already engaged to somebody. Before you know it, this brother says, I'm happy. It's good for them. Blah, blah, blah. You carry and ship trouble. It is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy. May that never happen in Koinonia. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry. All kinds. And God is my witness. I love the people with all my heart and with all passion. 
there are people who have come to meet me with charms. This is what we were doing. There are ladies who have gone to Zaria City and come to say this. I don't say, ah, no, no, no. With all the teaching, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't do that. When a brother is caught or a sister, you restore one. Are we together now? If a man of God comes to how many men of God have come to me? Man of God, I'm preaching, but I'm caught up in masturbation or pornography. I don't look and I say, you, of all people, there's no such thing as that. Let me tell you, there is no man who cannot fall. We are all products of God's mercy. I have learned this. I know that if any man is standing, he's only standing because of God's grace. Grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Listen, that's how we treat people all around. You see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church, you stand and laugh at them. Ah, see this lady tying her hair in a certain way. See this one cat walking, and there are people who see certain ladies. The lady is just wearing her trousers. I say, Look at them. These are all the prostitute ladies moving all around. What is this? It's wrong. It's wrong. That love is what we do not have. That's why we don't see the power of God. We pray, we fast, but we have no love. He said, There remain these three faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all is love. There is no ministry I cannot preach in. There is no man of God I cannot talk to. No matter, I don't care who. I love the body of Christ. And I love the body of Christ passionately. Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors our pastors have condemned the holy spirit is nudging you read this book there is lawlessness in your church read papa kubui's book for instance maybe he wrote a book on holiness and god is saying read it you need it but i said no, no 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 the church i come from we have all of this and you lose out there was a time during my retreat for one whole day the Holy Spirit, well, it started in the night, but the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Papa Kumui's messages. Man, that thing flogged me from head to toe. Just the greeting. It wasn't even what he was addressing. There was a spirit that oozed out of him that I, I don't know how many things I repented from, from that night in morning. And it was good for me. See, brothers and sisters, you must love the body of Christ. We are all going to the same heaven. There is none that will be created for only you. I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to start you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selma. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? This thing ruined the lady. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, he who does not have any sin should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came she found a home that time we used to meet in, in the campus there do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching her baby would just be silent when we get up and we start praying she would say her baby is kicking she found love found acceptance I used to bless that lady with money every time she was because of the shame and the reproach 
that believers brought to her life she said she wanted to defer i said you are not deferring you must finish and i'm going to stand with you i think a jimmy is a witness and a few people here i used to walk with that lady with her big stomach i will walk with her in front of their hostel amina and drop her there let anybody think what he wants to think they say the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy are you sure that whatever you want to think think it are we together now i will never forget i i was so passionate about her issue the lord revealed to me the day she would give birth and i told her i said prepare on a wednesday you are going to give birth that morning she called in the morning i was so happy as if it was my child as she was giving birth i was already appearing in shika happily when she gave birth i said i want the child where is the child are you the father that's not the issue i want the child i held that child listen i prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart people were looking at me that child's destiny parents can choose to mess up but children don't choose to come give them a right to enjoy a blessed life are we together i have stood by people here in police stations oh so so person is in police station and he said they should talk to you oh this he said you are his pastor he said you are this i said what's his name i said yes i know him oh this person did a and b i said i'm coming and i will go there i will appear there ah, ah. sorry sir are you not the person koinonia yes i'm the one they are our wounded soldiers but we'll hold them to a place of victory well i'm not a coward no listen i'm encouraging you this night practice that ministry some of you need to go back to somebody and say look i left you the day i found out that you were drinking but i'm back to tell you i love you i see the way you are struggling to listen to koinonia messages i see how sincerely you have a passion to get back i'm here to help you you do that you will see the power of god in your life i never never have never will condemn anybody see let me tell you there is nobody god cannot change don't you sit down and say me i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't do this just keep quiet and say lord i give you all the praise during our counseling session you see muslims come people come muslims because they know that i love them and i'm friendly i don't squeeze my face as if as if i'm the person who did this and say why are you here are you not no 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 everybody jesus healed in the bible was not born again but he still healed them i love them i play with their children i'm happy i have blessed the lives of people who today who have no business nothing in return for me please i'm teaching you something that will bless you there are people who cannot come for koinonia right now because of scars in their lives and some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars there are roommates who would have won to jesus christ there are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things but we are the ones who destroy them exaggerated confrontation i even hear that in many churches it's even an, a thing of embarrassment they come and embarrass the people publicly embarrass the parents misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly we don't even understand what god is saying whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere he turned it inside the cup and kept it in a fridge you would think he's zobo does zobo foam let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of god let me tell you listen i have learned something by experience once you see somebody over talking about a little issue he's a victim of it he, that talk is to create a sense of justification believe what i'm telling you the day jesus christ will come you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him you would think it would be joshua selman with all my ministry regalia god will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast because we who think we are great we are arrogant people and will not come to god but there are those who say lord in iniquity did my mother bet me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find him 
every time I go to God, I don't go with a sense of condemnation. But brothers and sisters, I go with a sense of gratitude. Ah, because I know. I know what the mercy of God has done in my life. Are we together? The next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant, don't start asking stupid questions. You turn and see somebody, ah, he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to God answering altar call. He said, but bros, now where did you go to that they hit you like this? It's over. Learn to help people. I'm not laughing. Three errors that are stopping the unity of the body. I love people. I love you. Whenever you see me rebuke you, you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love. I can rebuke you, but when you commit the offense, I will be there. I wrote a song years ago. The bandage is larger than the wound. I will sing it one day for you. I wrote that song to help hurting people. I'm concluding. Jesus gives a story of a Samaritan woman, right? A, a, a good Samaritan. Somebody was beaten by armed robbers. Are we together? A religious person came and passed and looked at him, not wanting to be unclean, left. A pastor came and looked at him and saw it and said, no, 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 I'm holy and left. But then another person came, a Samaritan, and got down on his knees and cleaned him. Whose wounds have you cleaned? See, the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover. The ability to rebuke and yet guide. To tell you, no, 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 no. Gulda is Gulda. It's not the way of God. However, there is a grace that can help you. I am willing to help you. I will never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem. She was seeing things. She was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours. They took her to security office. They called her pastor. He kept giving all kinds of excuses. I refused to come. The lady, I mean, she would literally fight with anybody. Bah, 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 bah. Praying supposedly overnight, like for two days, non-stop. I just, somebody, she doesn't even attend our meetings. Then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me. I said, I'm coming. I was at the security office. I just got there and they said I should write statement. I said, for what? I'm, I, allow me to find out what is going on first. I will take any embarrassment if it is for you. I will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom. Let me be controversial. Misunderstand me. The most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day. When we stand before him, God will... See, let me tell you, the day we stand before God, you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven. And you will be surprised to see those who will be said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You will see somebody you have concluded upon who later when you died gave his life to christ and god used him who would have said saul will be the one to bless people who would have said so listen live your life with eternity in view do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom do not be a man of values when people are bleeding be there we're rounding up god told me if we can address these three errors there will be no reason for criticism again there will be no reason for anything strange there are people who wait for men of god to fall that's why prayer department and the rest pray for i mean they are waiting they are waiting somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money what is your business if you don't understand kingdom finances you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish oh the tv ministry he's doing he's doing it out of this and that and that let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed Joshua Selman has a three-year-old. This beautiful lady is his daughter. And he will say, you know, uh, my conscience, the same you, the same you who is looking at me right now, 
the same you who is receiving miracles the same you who is a man of god with envelopes and kneeling down they were the same people who said crucify him please reduce it two keys let's sing one song and close this night there's a song in my spirit play 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 mike when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all will see jesus will sing and shout the victory i have a version when we all get to heaven what a day of surprises that will be because you will see people you never felt will make heaven you see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial they are not of god you will see them stand at the gates of heaven and you will watch the way the gates will be shut against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of christ rejoiner when you read his book the final quest it was a revelation of the operation of the body of christ please read the book if you can get it i read it years ago and it blessed me and when he was shown the vision of the body of christ he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down and they were christians who were pulling their soldiers he found out that whenever any believer had an issue many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all christians may it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated i'm not teaching you to not confront error but it in itself is an error to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry a prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of God's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church. What will a wise prophet do? Will you not calm down after the meeting? You call the woman and say, Mama, please don't be offended. This is what I saw. I can pray with you. I can help you. He just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and said, What I'm seeing is a surprise. Well, I did that and that. Who is by the name ABC? People clapped. Ah, Mama, you got it right. Who is by the name so so person? They clapped. They say, Two of you, you know what you are doing. And he just tore that ministry into two. You think that's the will of God? Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse thirty-six. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of pharaoh verse 36 says and that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt that the land perish not in famine verse 37 the bible says and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 can we read together if you're there one to read and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, in whom the Spirit of God is? He said, Can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, This interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise. 
and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy it. and pharaoh said who is the person in other words he threw a challenge to the entire egypt can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified if you know you are that proficient step up no race was mentioned he didn't say if you are an egyptian or if you are a jew he said can we find such a person i want to bless that person i want to lift and promote that person but can we find such a diligent person such a skilled person such a proficient person and the bible says there was none and then verse 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown thee this thing there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art he was not just lifted because he was a he was a of of the covenant and, and all of that no the bible says the king testified pharaoh he said there is none there is none who is as discreet and wise and because of that verse 40 thou shall be over my house immediately no board meeting no discussion are you getting what i'm saying thou shall be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne shall i be greater than thou 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring a symbol of authority and put it on joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of linen and put a gold chain about his neck 44 43 and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and he cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt verse 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt look at that 45 says and pharaoh called joseph you know called him all the name and he gave unto him his wife asena and the daughter of potiphar priest of own and joseph went all over the land of egypt the last verse and joseph was how many years old how many years old joseph was 30 years old when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out of the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of egypt everybody say diligence say proficiency listen to me the world that we live in right now if you want the favor favor that's the reward system of the kingdom the favor of god many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access i told you that you need to get my teachings the full gospel there i give you a balanced view of the dimension of god's grace and favor because i told you every christianity that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible christianity read from genesis to revelation every time god wanted to bless a man he demanded partnership on his own part is that true it's not all up to god and it's not all up to you your own part is to be diligent to gain mastery hallelujah i began to teach last week and i said that there are so many people in the body of christ they are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. 
those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability. Listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take 
take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you, what you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Call to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph, same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. 
The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous. Made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth you come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down they say kai ken ah that song i say really you, you see how you are deceiving yourself we our standards are very small so we we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small you're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. 
the Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. That dealeth with a slack hand. A lazy person. No inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. 
Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Twelve verse eleven. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said, "Not slothful." The word "slothful" there means laggy. You are not. You are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said, "Not slothful in business, diligent." fervent, zealous in spirit, serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something, as you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether the right apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter Jeroboam the Bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average day and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches. And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. 
you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine. I know it's a spirit that, that stops me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly as if it's your place, as if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye great. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who have paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. 
I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. He said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities, when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared. When you are ready. Then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated. And I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job. 
that they were paying him 5,000. I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good. Became invincible. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant. Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I've found my servant. And with my holy oil, I've anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service. I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent. By March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace. Willing to pay any amount. Job or no job. 
there are people who are not working but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift let me tell you it says buy the truth God put a price tag on the truth and if you have the truth men will buy the truth they will pay you and they will call it a privilege is God speaking to someone here and don't say I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity I cannot speak English no 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 none of those things master whatever God has given you are you hearing what I'm saying master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again that true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders, not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence exceptional competence lift your voice and pray lord i'm tired of being a mediocre i'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty i'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity in this season of the rain i'm challenging myself come on pray young and old it's time for a new season i arise and i shine for my light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon me Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray as a worker. I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional, 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 exceptional. I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven and I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all opportunity and seasons come to them all hallelujah hallelujah rise up on your feet let's pray this prayer point you're going to ask god for grace mention the areas where you need god to grant you grace to be competent there are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. 
Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him.
see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around, inside and outside, and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. 
Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break chains. Break. Break chains. Break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Release the Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1.18. 
it says four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against judah against israel and against jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head he said but i have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns we have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness they must let you go after nine plagues pharaoh refused to let them go he said yet will i send one more plague upon pharaoh and egypt and after that he will let you go jesus paid the price in full completely there is no reason why the devil should tie you down when he was on the cross he said it is finished and we are here to enforce that which that fatigued in the name of jesus for those in front here they represent families i don't care what kinds of spirits or entities at the count of three you will let god's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood i cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now i compel you by the blood of jesus opens the gates of captivity that blood opens that gate Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie, Stephanie, I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours, if it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none we can move forward because this is what the lord is showing me i'm seeing a family it's like four children they are here they came here is it you you are the one where are the people where are your children come why are you sitting back come Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. 
and it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring. But it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm. <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi, mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody, and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen, he said, We see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen. My dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What, does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? Is a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman, she sees, and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God. So that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come. Madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zatali kaparando skolabaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand. But two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces. Right now happening between both of you. Is a drinking together. Is a healthy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go. Now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare. You step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's alright. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus name. Newi. I'm hearing the name of a place. There is. There is Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is. 
there is a there is somebody at, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newe. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. Come on, give Jesus. Oh, praise God. I pray to you, Baladaba. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly. The grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Eleven. Yes. And I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when 
the refinery to Shika here. Said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can't. Eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did it stop working? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. It brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way, bringing breakthroughs to you, refining the fire and causing the hand of wickedness over your family that embargo is lifted over your family in the name of the lord jesus christ come ma. don't worry god is touching everybody just connect to what he's doing mommy look at me please don't cry look at me just look at me i want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Let me yours. Please bring out. I give him, I give him, I give him the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now.
Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you. The price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side. Please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that. Please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online. It's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman 
is not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala bala bala. Hey, se mara na na mo suri na 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 mas. Shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato shupre gede bala la bala. Hey, shabara la la bala. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God. Kabbalataya. He said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. 
Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now. That you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mam bro, do sekete balakata. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps. But fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death. Have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause cause fear from your life now I cause fear I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you that through a night vision, mysterious prophetic encounters, may your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind. Saying, this is the way. I command. 
between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now 
in the name of Jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life I bring that confusion to an end now I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb in fact I pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please I pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer I put an anointing on your skill I put an anointing I put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands I just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge 
gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings I impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 I release it to you utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance I, I release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance Zamatic alive Lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of Jesus I release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of Jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on as they come God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old God bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny Jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously 
totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to Jesus hallelujah I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cast the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekapos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The face of development Lord grant me the